Did you know that Maikama is not just a setter for the Turkish volleyball club Hawkbank and the USA national team, but also a YouTube blogger? Along with his friends Joe and Gage, they launched the Out of System channel. And not so long ago, Micah invited his Hogbank teammate Erwin and Gapet for a joint podcast. They discussed many intriguing topics related to the French volleyball magician. And now, I'd like to share the most interesting ones with you. I'll leave a link to the full conversation in the description. Be sure to check out this masterpiece. And now, let's get started. Erwin's father was a fan of the legendary NBA player Magic Johnson, whom he watched on VHS tapes. Johnson's real name was Erwin, so now you know who the newborn Frenchman was named after. Younger Engapet also watched Magic's matches, but never became his fan. Perhaps this was because Erwin preferred football over basketball. The future Olympic MVP played football and volleyball for a long time. All his friends played football and actively persuaded him to stick with it. But eventually he chose volleyball because the French player's volleyball coach convinced him he had more prospects there. However, at the age of 16, Engapet could have ended his career because his father disliked that he spent all his time and energy on training and games, but not on his studies. His entire routine consisted of sleep, eat, volleyball, rest, eat, volleyball, sleep. Something had to be done, so the outside hitter paused his volleyball activities. But after half a year, young Nagapet returned to the court, with his father being the initiator of the comeback. Eric, Erwin's dad, headed a French tour looking for young talents. And when the team's management asked the coach, does your son still play? The answer was affirmative. So Erwin, who hadn't touched the ball for six months, came in and within an hour, with his play, convinced them to sign a contract with him. A valid question arises, what will happen to Ngapet after he ends his career? Will he become a coach? Currently, Erwin asserts he doesn't see himself in that role. He understands how tough the profession is, observing his father's path. But as Eric Ngapet claimed, he never saw himself as a coach either. So maybe Erwin will change his mind someday and lead a club. If you're curious about when Negapet plans to end his career, the Tokyo Olympic MVP tried to answer this. He aims to play at least until the Los Angeles Olympics in 2028, readily stepping aside for any younger and more talented player. Erwin doesn't want to be a burden to his national team. If someone better comes along, he won't stand in their way. Engapet has advocated a circus-style play since his earliest years, enjoying the game and having fun with teammates. All these tricks are an attempt to express himself on the volleyball court. Plus, it's crucial to gain the audience's approval, attracting their attention with something unique. This was also a motivation for Erwin. Yes, as he matured, he had to give up constant freestyling for the team's strategies, as the result usually comes first. But he can't imagine himself without the show. That's why he found it hard to play in Russia, where there's no room for creativity, everything being framed within strict, pragmatic boundaries. Perhaps for the same reason, Brizard didn't settle in the Super League. Though Engapet acknowledges it was a positive experience, despite being tough for him. It was much easier for him in Italy, especially when Angelo Lorenzetti, his coach at Modena, was tolerant of Ngapet's game peculiarities and the unusual techniques they practiced with Bruno during training sessions but he asked them to indulge their whims before the main training. So they could spend an hour on all this nonsense before the core training sessions. But there were days when Angelo asked them to focus solely on specific tasks and not engage in creativity. So to some extent, one could say that Engapet changed volleyball by introducing creativity, which we now observe even in major matches, enhancing the game's spectacle. By the way, it is believed that Engapet pioneered and popularized the jump set during back row attacks, now seen in nearly every match. But as the player himself admitted, he picked this up in Italy from Goran Vujovic, the current general manager of Perugia. He saw this technique and thought, what's this? And why am I not doing it? While it now looks easy and natural initially, Ngapet struggled, constantly trying it in practice and making up to 20 mistakes in a row, driving Lorenzetti crazy. Once he mastered this skill and started using it regularly in games, everyone began to think he invented it. But if we talk about Ngapet's signature move, that's his own innovation. It's performed intuitively, usually in response to a challenging set. 
Aside from their artistic style, the French are also known for their impregnable defense. Naturally, the podcast guests were curious about how they achieved this. Engapet explained, it's because France doesn't have early specialization, so all players practice every element. For instance, Tonuti was originally a libero, and Grebenikov was a setter and outside hitter. Erwin sees this versatility as the reason for the French's strong defense. And due to the French mentality, Engapet isn't fond of beach volleyball. It's not a principled stance, the sport just isn't as prevalent there. There's no separate pathway for players to specialize in beach volleyball from a young age. Most French beach volleyball players are former indoor professionals. In general, for leisure and entertainment on French beaches, they prefer playing 3-on-3. Three three. Such tournaments are held more often than the standard 2-on-2. Two two. So which volleyball format do you prefer? Let me know in the comments, I'm really interested. Many remember that France won the Olympics in Tokyo, but few recall their journey to that final. The French team started with two defeats, needing to change something quickly. And Gapet took the initiative, motivating his team. Though Erwin is not typically a locker room leader, he leads by example in his gameplay and dedication during matches. But for a historic goal and dream, he had to step out of his comfort zone. And, as we all know, it worked out beautifully. Typically, the atmosphere in the French locker room doesn't require additional hype. It's always filled with great vibes, songs, music and dancing. So it's no wonder Engapet plays his best volleyball there. And it's no secret that Erwin loves rap, investing much energy in music. But few would think he's so passionately dedicated to it. As Micah Ma noted, the outside hitter could just find a corner and start rapping. And since we mentioned the American setter, let's discuss that aspect too. Choosing the best setters in his career, Erwin picked Bruno and Tonyuti, feeling most comfortable with them. But he placed the Brazilian first because they spent more time and played more often together, considering their time in Italy. Questions about his current partner, Ma, were inevitable. Ngapet spoke highly of the American skills, calling him the most aggressive and attacking setter in the world. If Micah continues to work hard, he could become one of the world's top setters in the coming years. These are the main points I extracted from the podcast and wanted to share with you. Remember, the link to the full version of this masterpiece is in the video description. Be sure to watch. Besides the positive and fun stories about Engapet, we shouldn't forget his dark side, I've talked about it in a separate video, where I also analyzed his gameplay and technique. So make sure to watch that too. And as usual, this was Nick. Love what you do and you will undoubtedly succeed. See you soon. Bye.